Hi, I'm Sandy, and welcome to Life with Sandy. Well, good morning and it is good morning uh, today is Thursday May 12th and we have birthdays today today is Joan Johnson's birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Joan happy birthday to you cha 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 it's also Heather's birthday and the name of her channel is Heather Rose Up Heather happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Heather. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Well, I hope you both have a great birthday. Um, I had to get to my walk in early today because Jim and I are going to the lawyer today to get our will updated. Um, I looked at our will and we did it back in the 70s. <laughs> it's time to update. I thought it was in the 80s, but then when I looked at the date. It was in the 70s. So we're going to go do that and then. Uh, Jim's going to work on the bathroom a little bit. He's hoping to finish his portion of the bathroom tomorrow. Tomorrow's the two-week time period since we ordered the shower door, and they said three to four weeks, so we probably have another two weeks out on that. But all the painting will be done up until then, and all the pretty stuff that I got at Home Goods the other day, I have it in my bathroom now, so it looks nice. But you can't see that until it's the completed completed deal if you want to see what I bought at home goods uh, I'll leave a link to the video in the description box down below and you can go check it out and see all the goodies and treasures that I bought um, yesterday I got sidetracked on my story I couldn't figure out why I went to that story and then as I was editing I realized it was because I was talking about the air ducts because I have a uh, Stanley steamer coming today they're gonna um, check out to give us a price I told the girl I was going to get it done no matter how much it cost, but she said, no, they have to come and give us a quote first, and then we schedule an appointment. So they're supposed to come today between 12 and 4, so we'll see how that goes. And then, um, what else? Oh, so the story. Well, I almost lost my story. I lost my train of thought again. We haven't had our air ducts ever cleaned since we moved in. We moved in November of 2006. And like I said, we did the original pull up the carpeting and put down the floating floor. And then we pulled up the floating floor. And then there was the construction of the hardwood floors, which we hired somebody to do. And then uh, Jimmy did the basement, which was like a little bit of drywalling. So there was like dust from that. And then obviously the bathroom, but the pulling down all of that crap and then drywalling that. My house is like a dust fest. It's like, it's ridiculous how dusty it is. Not, not so much now because I really really did a really thorough job yesterday. I did get my living room and dining room done. I didn't get the chairs or the tables done, which I'm going to do when I go come back from the uh, lawyer. I'm going to do that when I get back. And then I was going to tackle the kitchen today. Kind of iffy on that. I might just uh, tackle the refrigerator, pull everything out, clean, you know, give it a deep clean the refrigerator. Obviously, I don't have to do the stove because the stove is brand new, basically. And uh, <clears throat> the dishwasher, I got one of those cleaning tablets that you put in, and then you just run the dishwasher. I think it's from... I forget who it's by. Anyway, it's in a little blue packet. And you just put it in, and then you run the dishwasher, and then it, it, cle it cleans and sanitizes it. So I'm going to do that. And uh, then probably tomorrow because somebody is supposed to come to pick up my grill that they tentatively said that they want to buy it. I'll probably finish the kitchen, you know, cleaning, sanitizing the counters and washing the cupboards down, you know, from the grease from the stove and stuff like that. You know, it's loud. You gotta outlaw those things. Remember the old days when you used a broom and you pushed it? I mean, I know it was a lot more work, but it was a lot quieter, too. And then... 
with the with the dust on the house, when we were looking at houses, the very first house we looked at that we actually walked into, I've told the story about that house, but um, the description was a speck of dust would die of loneliness, and I thought, I gotta see this house. It was so true. It was a speck of dust would have died of loneliness in that house because it was so immaculate. And then when we moved in, we found out from the neighbors that she used to wash all of her windows winter time, summer time, spring time, once a week. Usually on a Saturday, unless it was raining or snowing. But she washed all the windows inside and out every week. Who only knows what she did inside the house, because the inside the house was like spotless too. Even if you went by the furnace and you rubbed your finger across the top of the furnace, got a speck of dust. So, when I moved in, I felt sorry for all those dust particles, and I said, come on, move in with me. <laughs> because I never was that thorough of a cleaner. I never was. But, and then why does it spring cleaning? Why isn't there summer cleaning, winter cleaning, fall cleaning? Basically, it's just spring cleaning. Here comes Jim and our creaky old back door. But the older I get, the longer my spring cleaning takes me. I used to get it done in a day. Now it takes me about a week. But then I get to sit in all my pleasure of my clean house. Here he is, throwing trash away. So, all right, that's going to do it for now. I don't know what I'm going to have to eat today. i got to boil some eggs. I'm going to go in now and have an apple and a banana and some water before we leave. And then uh, get thinking on the day. So I'll talk to you soon. Okay, back for my walk. I'm going to drink my water, have an apple and a banana. Well, Jim and I are on the move again today, right, Jim? Oh, yeah. We're, we're moving today. What are we going to do today? Going to the lawyer. Yeah, I'm going to update our well. I don't know if I got our old well. I think we did that in the 70s, maybe the 80s. Definitely needs to be updated a little bit. So we're going to go there now and um, then come home. Jim's going to start working on the bathroom again. Okay, Jim left for work. Um, I got my ta my chairs and tables all clean now. Um, obviously, I'm back from my experience at the, uh, what do you call it, at the attorney's office. I can just picture how you guys look when we refer to the death book because when we were bringing out all of our paperwork and showing them everything that we wanted to put into the will, and then I we showed him, we said, this is our death book, and he had that look like, so every time we, I say it, I'll just picture in my mind the way he looked when we said it. That's how probably how you guys are looking at me <laughs> when I say it. <laughs> but uh, he did think it was a good idea. The only thing he suggested suggested that we do with it is, uh, I just, I'm sorry, I just got done eating a hard-boiled egg. I didn't film it. You know what a hard-boiled egg looks like. Um, that uh, he said I should put their full name in there just so that there's no contention because... Um, like I said, it's not just a family death book. I know, inheritance book would sound so much better. But what he liked was at the outside of the book, it said Shine Bright. So he said, I'm just going to list it as the Shine Bright book, not the death book. I said, okay, that sounds fine. I said, but put in parentheses death book. He says, if you want me to put that down, I go, oh, yeah, I want you to put that down. So he says, okay. So he's going to put that in there. But anyway, um, we have family and friends that have things in the book, too. It's not just completely family. It's not immediate family. It's extended family. It's friends, neighbors, people that see something that they like. I go put it in the death book. And so we do. But I don't have their full names in there, so I have to put their full names in there. And then, um, so we did our power of attorney in there for the money and the health and all that good stuff. And um, what else did we do? Oh, we did the will. We made sure we had all of our beneficiaries right for everything. And it's kind of sad to say it. Like, I'm not really super, super rich. So I wanted to leave a little bit to my grandkids. They suggested, he suggested that, because uh, we want the sale of the house to go to split four ways, three ways for my kids, and then one way to split up equally among my grandchildren. But he said that because of the laws in Michigan, that that like, skips a generation, that they'd have to pay taxes on it, that it would be better just to leave it to the, you know, like three, 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 to my three kids. And then he said, since you seem to have such a good relationship with your kids, have them decide how much they're going to give to the grandkids. And so um, 
I know, because I've seen it in myself in the past, that you can have the best loving relationship while they're alive, but then as soon as somebody dies, I bought mom that, or I got grandma that, or Anna, I know, seen it, been there, done that. Not done that, but I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Um, when my grandmother passed away, my mother, for the longest time, was estranged from her sisters because when they went into the house, they were saying, well, I'm like, just as an example, it's not like they fought over something silly like this, but it's just an example. Like, well, I bought mom that toaster, so I want the toaster. And well, I bought mom the iron, so I want the iron. Um, my mother got so mad that she just walked out and she said, I don't want anything and just left. And for the longest time, didn't talk to her sisters because she thought they got so petty about little tiny little things. That's probably part of the reason why I want to put everything in the death book, inheritance book, shine bright book, whatever you want to call it. That's why I want to put everything in there for that and uh, for that reason. But when Jim's parents passed away, there was no problems. There really wasn't. Um, she pretty much had everything written down. But uh, when we went into the house to, you know, get the personal items, the things that we wanted, there was no issues. And I really think that that's, that'll be happening with my family too. I really don't think we'll have any issues. But I won't be here to decide. I've told my kids I'll come back and haunt them. Because when I went to the uh, thyroid doctor, we got talking, I think I told you this, that we got talking about the difference between ghosts and spirits. And he asked me if I believed in ghosts, and I told him, no, but I believe in spirits, and he couldn't understand the difference. To me, a ghost is somebody that comes back to haunt you because you've done something wrong. But a spirit is, a, is the presence, maybe not a physical presence, but a spiritual presence of someone that you love that's passed before you, and that's kind of looking out for you, kind of watching over you. Because how many of us have just for no apparent reason, smelled something that brought back a memory of a loved one. And then you're just like, look, little, because Jim was sitting here the other day and he was just talking about, he smells cannolis. And I'm thinking, I don't smell any cannolis. But then I remembered his mother used to make cannolis all the time. And I said, your mom was probably in the room here. And he said, you know, you're probably right. <laughs> so it's just simple things like that. Once again, <laughs> Oh, this sucks getting old. Why did I come onto this subject? It was just about, you know, making sure that everything's in the book that people want. And and, and I took, gave the guy an example of, like, our humor in our family because when he was so mortified by the the look on his face, you could see he was mortified by the talk of the death book, is I have a home interior uh, nativity set that I got back in 72, 73, something like that. And Jimmy just loved it. And so he said he wanted the nativity set. So we wrote it in the book, and then, you know, like everything that Jimmy wanted, we wrote it in the book, and then Danny went and said, but everything that he wanted, we put it in the book, and then it came to Christy, and she said she wanted the baby Jesus from the nativity set, <laughs> and Jimmy says, no, that's mine, and she said, you just asked for the nativity set, you didn't ask for all the figurines that were in it, I just want the baby Jesus, <laughs> and so we went back to Jimmy's page, and we put right in there, because it's a joke, but I mean, you know, just in case, we wrote in there, nativity set, including baby Jesus. <laughs> so, so then um, Chrissy just kind of laughed. She says, I wasn't really serious. And I said, I know that, but we're making sure this is a legal document. <laughs> now we want to make sure it's perfectly right. So that's just kind of like our humor in my family. It really is. It's just, we're, we're oddballs. I'd never said we weren't. We're just oddballs. I know that. But um, so we got everything pretty much, you know, situated that we wanted to do and uh, got the things figured out that with the grandkids because I want to make sure my grandkids get something. And like he pointed out too, Danny has two children, Christy has, or Jimmy has two children, but Christy only has one. It wouldn't be fair for Sophia to get so much more than the other two, the other four grandkids. So um, we're just going to set aside, uh, we put in the thing for each of them for their third to give each child like a certain portion, like a a set amount we figured out. We figured out an amount that it was equal that for everybody would get it. And then uh, obviously Jimmy and Danny won't get as much money as Christy then because Christy only has one child, but I'm not getting down to the nitty gritty of pennies. It's just not going to work. And then um, I guess that was it for that. And then I haven't eaten anything. I don't know if I told you this. I've already finished. Yeah, I did. Finished my tables and my chairs. Oh, well, we had the appointment with the Stanley Steamer. I don't know. 
they're just they're kind of driving me a little nuts. So when they came yesterday, I told you for the carpet, they gave me the wrong price on the carpet, and then we had to readjust that. We got that all taken care of. And then today, the people were supposed to come out for the um, Stanley Steamer to do the air, give us a price on the air ducts. And I had told the lady when she had asked, do you want the 8 to 12 appointment? And I said, no, because I have a 10 o'clock appointment in the morning. I won't be home till like 11, 1130. Uh, could you change it to 12 to 4? And so she said, well, the only thing we have is 12 to 6. And I go, that's fine. We'll do change it to 12 to 6. And we got home probably about 1125, 1130. And I was just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, I thought, I'm going to check my voicemail. I checked my voicemail, and sure enough, the... Uh, Stanley Steamer guy came at uh, 11.15, about 10 minutes before we got home. So I called him, and he, did, uh, he didn't answer right away. I left a message, but he called me back like within 10 minutes. And he told me he was here, and he said that uh, our appointment time was 8 to 12. I said, no, it was 12 to 4 or 12 to 6. I couldn't remember which one, but I knew it was at least at 12. And so he said, well, that ha happens sometimes. Can I come tomorrow? So I said, yeah, I'm going to be home all day tomorrow anyhow. I'm waiting for the lady to come to pick up our fire pit. She said she was going to come and pick it up tomorrow, so i got to be home anyhow. And then Jim's hoping to finish the bathroom. And then all we're waiting for is the shower doors. And I think I'm going to go to Target just to see if there's something I want to buy. I don't know. I'm just in a spending mood for some reason. I don't know. When you start redecorating, you know, like not redecorating, you know, like the spring cleaning. When I was younger, I could get it all done like in a probably two days, maybe three at the most. By the time I'm done, this is going to take like a 10 day, 10 day project. I just, I, I can't do as much as I did, obviously. Jingles used to come at night when the kids went to bed at eight o'clock and I was in bed by two o'clock and the whole house was completely decorated. The tree, this, the manger, everything. Those days are long gone, baby. <laughs> long gone. The same with the cleaning of the house. So I'm thinking, well, you know, takes me a couple days, takes me a couple days. So if I do find anything at Target, I will definitely show you. Uh, like I said, I had so far today my apple, my banana, and a hard-boiled egg. And I had my 32 ounces of water. So big excitement. Big exciting day for Sandy, that's for sure. Last gift from my mother. My mother gave me this. I love trees. I just love trees. I love a bear tree rather than trees with leaves on it. I, I think, well, this got a few leaves on it, I understand. But I just think that it shows the foundation of the tree so much better. So most of my pictures are of trees. Yep. I have a lot of tree, tree pictures. <laughs> uh, trees and clocks. Trees and clocks. Go figure. There's my clocks. When the guy came yesterday, he said to... to uh, get the carpets, the you know, the uh, throw rugs. Uh, he said, um, there's a lot of noise. And then he looks up and he says, oh my gosh, you got a clock wall. And then my Beatles clock started going up playing Beatle music. And then my grandfather clock started going right after that. And then the two uh, mantle clocks up there started going off. <laughs> Plus, I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that. Usually my microphone picks up a lot, but all the ticking. Oh, Jim and I are so used to it, we don't even hear it anymore. But when my family comes over, they go, that ride drive me crazy. So, okay. The only thing I have to do left is, uh, I, know it's, I know this is kind of morbid, but it's like I've reached a point in my life, you know, like I said, you never know what day is yours to go. You never know, but... Uh, I'm trying to make my uh, funeral plans to put in the uh, safe deposit box So, because my kids won't know. They don't go to church. Although they were altar boys, altar servers. Christy wasn't, but Danny and Jimmy were altar boys. But alas, only me goes to church. <laughs> no one else. So, okay, that's going to be it. Look at 13 minutes. Going on and on. Rattling along. Look at me rattling along. <laughs> talk to you guys soon. Okay, I didn't eat breakfast or lunch. I picked up a little piece of turkey here. <laughs> um, and I ate my soup already and forgot to film it. But it was a 10 vegetable soup uh, from Panera. A cup of it for one point. 
and then I have a half of a turkey bacon avocado sandwich for six points. So that's seven points for that and six points for my mango dragon fruit. So that brings it up to 13 and I had a half of a half of a roll. So I figured that's four points. So it's a 17 point meal. But like I said, I had the apple and the banana earlier. I did have a hard boiled egg that I didn't show you just before I went shopping. I wanted to eat something. I went to Target. That's where I got my my drink from Target. But um, I didn't see anything at Target that I wanted to buy. I was just kind of like looking around to see if there's something jumped jumped to my eye, but it didn't. So gonna uh, enjoy this for my bre my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. One meal today. I know it's not the way to go, but it's the way I'm going today. Soup, sandwich, Panera. Not Panera, Starbucks. See what happens when you leave the front door or the back door unlocked? I come in the back door, and if they had that locked, I would have come in the front door. Yep, you can't keep her away. Hello, my friends. Hope everybody had a nice Mother's Day. And we're having beautiful weather here in Michigan right now. Gorgeous. Look at she's got Gorgeous. her. She's got her shorts on. She's, I got her short pants on. She's showing on. leg. I am showing leg. I told the story the other day of uh, your mom getting mad at Jim, and you had to have the crutches because oh, I had to have the beater crutch. The beater crutch, because it was an eventful day, wasn't it, Bertie? Oh, it was. It was. It was a fun day had by all. <laughs> what happened after we left? Oh, I don't remember. You don't remember? She hasn't got a good memory like me. I remember that I made it home from Port Huron to Detroit in like 32 minutes. Hmm. Because <laughs> your brother was a little upset. I don't I don't think anything really happened after that. No. No. He kind of died down. Thank God. Bertie got her crutch back. and I got my crutch back. I was able to walk around then. Okay, tell us how you broke your leg. I fell off the top of a slide. She's so coordinated. I am. And I fell into sand. Which is unusual because when we were growing up, they had cement underneath everything. Remember the monkey bars you'd hang upside down and then the yeah. bottom was cement? Yeah. No, it was all sand. I hung there for a while, tried to get my sister to catch me, and she thought I was joking, and I fell. What were you even trying to do? Why didn't you I was trying down? to go down the slide, and there was kids that had a big platform at the top, and the kids were some kids were playing on the top. And I said, "Okay, go down," and they wouldn't go down, so I went to go over them. So when I went to go over them, they stood up, and off the side I went. Hmm. And how old were you? You had to be it about was, it twelve. Was, it was Labor Day, just the day before eighth grade. The day before eighth grade. So you oh no, been... Saturday before eighth. Yeah, it was Labor Day weekend. So you would have been what? I was, 12. what, 14? 14? Yeah. 14 years 13, old. 13, 14. Playing on a slide. Those were the days. You wouldn't catch a 13 or 14-year-old on a slide oh, now. Oh, hell no. But back then. Back then, anything went. And Bertie was proof. Because we didn't, we didn't go to the malls, really, that much. No. Once in a while, my girlfriends and I would go to Eastland. We'd walk. But, nah, we just hung out outside, unlike kids today. They all stay in you the You go through a whole neighborhood, which I did going, coming here, and I saw one parent and one child. Yeah. Not when we were growing up. Ooh. No. Had Bertie, to dodge the bicycles in the street. Bertie used to come to where I worked and bag my groceries for me. I'd ride my bike. She was my bagger. I know. And I paid her dearly. Yes, I got I got hostess treats. Yes. <laughs> Say goodbye. Bye. Okay, you talk about my big salads. Look at this is big. Look at Brand, Bertie's big salad. But look at how good it is. Look it what I'm may not be on diet food with all the bacon on top. <laughs> this is what I'm having. Water. Because I've already eaten. But I said I'd come and keep Bertie company. Because that's the kind of gal she is. Yes, I am. Okay, I'm home now. Uh, Bertie ate that entire salad, which I can't complain because if it was mine, I probably would have ate it too. But it was a good night, and I didn't have anything but the glass of water. But if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, share if you think somebody might like to see it. As always, stay safe, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>